Hi everyone, my name is Ryan Rennie and I'm here doing a remote demonstration on how to make a simple instrument at home called an ocarina. So ocarinas are a type of ancient wind musical instrument uh, called a vessel flute. So vessel flutes are basically um, made up of a vessel and it's the same technology of when you just take a bottle <laughs> You blow air over the top to make a noise. It's the same technology uh, to make something like a whistle that we've done in a previous demonstration, but also the same technology for an ocarina like we have here. So um, I've got a four note instrument made out of unfired clay that it, it still works, which is kind of fun. So, um, yeah, I was actually pretty happy that I could get multiple notes out of this thing, and um, it's a huge leap from just the one note whistle, but they're pretty fun to make. So, like I was saying, this vessel flute is a whole kind of variety of instruments. Uh, traditionally, they can be made out of ceramics is the, is the primary material, but other materials have also been used over time, such as wood, glass, metal, or bone. Uh, what's interesting is that this instrument is believed to date back almost 12,000 years, which is pretty insane, uh, going back to Chinese and Mesoamerican cultures. It also is pretty prevalent throughout Europe, um, in Italy, in the Renaissance. Where I was first introduced to the ocarina is playing Zelda growing up, which is pretty awesome, the Ocarina of Time video game. Um, so that's kind of where my fascination began with ocarinas and in trying to figure out how to make this one I, I actually want to keep making them and experimenting with them they're kind of fun uh, so what we're gonna do is we're, we're gonna make a pinch pot two little pinch pots one a little bit narrower in this section right here and then one a little bit more round over here we're gonna put them together attach a little mouthpiece and we need a sharp edge to blow over. So you can see here that this is just a little pinched area. Um, and that's what we need to make the noise right there, you can see. So the tools that I have today are really just a little skewer and a little bit of water. And I'm using, I've got just about a pound of clay here or a baseball sized clump of clay. We might not need it at all. Uh, but to begin, I'll just start doing a typical pinch pot process. So I'll grab a piece of clay about, you know, something like this. We don't need to be too exact. It could be a little bit smaller or a little bit larger, and that's going to affect the tone in different ways. Uh, so I'll just make this into a ball of clay. And if you've seen any previous videos on pinch potting or you've done pinch pots before, you already know this process. But just to go through it again, uh, we just got a ball of clay, and I'll stick my thumb into it. And then I'm going to just start rotating it and pinching upwards as I rotate the clay and I'm trying to not let this flare outwards too much on accident so try to be pinching straight up or almost even inwards you know as you can see here we need a more conical shape at this end of the ocarina so I might end up uh, cutting or removing some clay to get that shape a little bit better. So I'm pinching, pinching, pinching this out. And the goal is to not have something completely perfect, but just to have something as relatively even as we can get uh, within reason. We don't want to have a, a little paper thin area next to a very, very thick area. But remember, it's, it's a handmade object. It can be a little lumpy. Uh, so I'm doing this in wet clay now, and I'll get it as good as I can in wet clay. And then as it sets up, we can kind of smooth the piece out even more if we'd like. So I'm getting something like this. And I'll actually have to cut that down a little bit. So to make this even a little bit more narrow, what I'm going to do is do this process called darting, where we just remove a small amount of material to bring this shape inward. So I'll come in here and I'll cut a, almost like a little narrow pizza slice. 
to this side. So then when I bring this back in, it, it makes that piece a little bit more narrow. And I'll do the same to the other side as well. Let's see, maybe this will work better. It's hard to pinch something deep and narrow, so I've been pinching it a little bit wider, and then we'll come in and dart. So this is a technique that they use in the, the fashion industry to tailor clothing. Uh, it would be done the same way. To, to tailor something in, you cut out a slice, bring it inwards, and then I'll just smooth that out. The clay is so wet right now, I'm not even gonna score or anything. This is super wet clay. Do the same to this side. Just pinching, and I really wanna confuse that seam completely. If it's wet clay, and you push down enough, and really smooth out that seam, it'll be just fine. So now I wanna make this kind of tip a little bit more pointy if I can. come around and make this a little bit more even. Sometimes when you dart, your base or your top can get a little uneven, that's fine. Cut that down. So, something like this should do And then what I'll do is I'll come in and I'll make the back side to fit on there. Which that one will just be a, uh, a little tiny round bowl. And hopefully we don't have to do any darting on that. So I'll let that sit here. And then again, I'm just getting this piece of clay into a round ball. This is probably a little bit too much clay. Same thing, I'll go in with my thumb. And then I'm just rotating as I pinch upward. So you wanna start from the very, very bottom. I've got finger under there. And I'm pinching upwards. So if you have a little too much clay, that's fine. We can cut down. And I'll come around here on the base with my the palm of my hand and I'll kind of trying to round this out. So let's see how these things are going to match up. It's a little bit big, that's fine. I want one to overlap the other actually, so I can really smooth that out well. Just a little bit too much material, so I'll come in here. Just got a little kitchen knife that I'm using. If we have to do a couple more darts, that's okay. Let's see how that's gonna fit in there. We're getting pretty close. You know, I think that'll work actually. So we wanna try and get this one this top piece just on the inside of that edge there. You can see how that is sitting there. And that's gonna give us an opportunity to very carefully smooth this out. Uh, this is gonna be a pretty delicate process right now because it could easily kind of collapse. But if we get this whole thing sealed up, we'll be able to trap some air in there 
And once that air is trapped, it'll help us uh, really have something to push back against. So I'm kind of cradling this thing so it doesn't collapse. If this felt a little too precarious for you, you could wait till they set up a little bit. You could set them outside on your windowsill or somewhere they could get some light. Or I have even turned my oven on really, really low and put the pieces in there for a couple minutes and that actually goes a long way. So now that this thing is sealed up, it's not so floppy because it's basically a balloon. We've got all that air trapped in there. So now would be the time to get this thing as smooth as you can. You could roll if you wanted. Um, that actually feels a little awkward. <laughs> so that can help round it out just a little bit. Yeah, that actually works pretty well kind of roll back and forth. That's really helping this whole thing kind of become one consistent shape. It's a little bit less lumpy now. If you see any little holes, you can fill in with some clay. this side. That helps. That's actually pretty good. Okay, so I'll set this aside to dry a little bit. And then the next part of the process would be to make the mouthpiece, which we're going to start with just a little clay tube that I'll make by rolling a small coil And then I'll put a little skewer through it and then roll it a little bit more. So the trick with coils is pinch out a piece of clay that's a little bit longer, something like this. And then it's all about using not too much pressure. It's almost really just the weight of your hands. You could use a little bit more pressure than that. But if you put too much pressure, you're gonna kind of flatten out and it's not really gonna roll very well. So be a little more delicate, really just the weight of your hands. We only need a small piece, but I actually always make my coils a little bit bigger than I need so I can cut down the best length that we have. So that's looking pretty good. I can cut down off a section here. Really something like that will work pretty well. It's going to connect on here. Yeah, that's a good length to start off with and then we can cut down about an inch to two inches. And then this part we want to be real careful with. We're going to run this skewer right through here and we hopefully are in the middle on both sides. That's pretty close. And then what I like to do is I just roll on that skewer and that actually really helps get a pretty good channel through this whole mouthpiece. And then you can see it's really open that up just by rolling. And that's about all the space we need. It wouldn't work so well with just one tiny, tiny hole made by the skewer. So rolling allows us to get a little more airflow in there. And then what I'll do is I'll just carefully cut this down.
so I'm just kind of I'm careful not to squish it too much when I cut and roll on the skewer. That's pretty good. Then I might just give this an extra wiggle. And then there we've got a nice little tube. Flatten that out. Okay, so these are the main components that we're gonna use to make an ocarina. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to let these dry out just a little bit. Um, I'll probably just turn my oven on low and, and stick them in there for a minute or two. And then we'll hopefully be at leather hard and come back and finish this guy up. <clears throat> okay everyone, so we're back with some leather hard clay. And if you're unfamiliar with what leather hard means, is it... Uh, it it's basically referring to a consistency of clay that is uh, getting a little bit stiff. So this is plastic clay, wet clay. This is leather hard clay. You know, it's still dark, um, but it's firmer, and I could still make attachments. And then this is bone dry clay. So we don't want to let our clay get too dry. You can see it's changed colors completely. Once it starts getting to this state, it's not. It's going to be difficult to work with, or uh, actually impossible to work with. So uh, I put this in the oven for a couple minutes, and it stiffened up. I think if you have the time, it's probably better to just let it air dry. But I've got this piece dried up. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make the opening for where the mouthpiece is going to get attached, and I'll just do that by cutting out some material with this skewer, but it, you want it to be oblong, kind of like this. And then we'll come in here and we'll take all of this out. So one reason you don't want your piece to get too dry is because we still want to be able to pinch this actually. So what I'm doing is I'm just, I'm coming in here um, and make the hole big enough to where you can comfortably stick a finger in to pinch that. We're looking for a slight, well, basically a pretty sharp angle right in there. So something like that will probably do okay. Um, and we also want to work with the when the clay is still a little bit wet so we can make adjustments as we go along. So our mouthpiece will then sit up here and we'll blow air across that. So I'm actually just going to flatten this out a little bit. I might just carve a little bit out here so my mouthpiece can just comfortably sit there. And it's good to start playing around with the sound now while we're trying to get it in place just to see uh, how our progress is looking. So I'll kind of carve out just a little bit more here. So this is going to, again, this is going to be where our mouthpiece sits. Something like that. And then we'll go in and we'll add clay around it just to give it some extra support. So let's see how that sounds. So yeah, actually that works pretty good already. So I start to play with that positioning. We want to get this angle or this, um, this little sharp edge as clean and as sharp as possible. Some people like to carve the angle, but I have found that just pinching and with a little bit of water, I've had better luck that way as opposed to carving when the clay is too dry to really work with after that. So you can fix your mistakes this way and you can kind of play with the different possibilities. So you're kind of tuning it. It 
does take quite a bit of finesse. <laughs> but basically you want the air to flow evenly over either side. So I think once it's making some noise, that's when I'll probably just come in and score this mouthpiece in place. Because I know I'm close. So scoring, we're going to take our little skewer, we're going to scratch quite a bit until we see a little bit of slip forming or this little mixture of clay and water. And that's going to help us stick this together. So I'll score that and then I'll score right in here where it's going to sit. And then I'll just kind of, I'll wiggle this in place just a little bit. And I still want to add some clay around it. But first kind of play with that angle. And see if you need to move this thing up or down. I think that's pretty good. So to add some more clay, I'm going to score just all around here. So the clay will, you know, help this thing stay in place, but also aesthetically it's going to make it a little bit more unified, rather so it doesn't look like just a tube stuck into this weird egg shape. So then I'll roll out a little bit of clay for what we call support coils to support that attachment. Again, you want even pressure, not too much. And I think something like that is probably good to start with. Just because this clay is starting to get a little dry might score this coil here just all up and down. I'll dip my tool in some water and then let's see here so just bring this around and then we'll do something like that something like that so that's going to help a lot with keeping this in place. And try not to move the placement of your mouthpiece too much. Because that's going to change the way that it works. And I think that's the main part of this project, is trying to figure out the mechanics of it. Which is also kind of why it's pretty fun, I think. Looking forward to firing some of these. So something like that's going to work out pretty well. I might just add some clay up around here too to make it look a little more unified. But we don't want to cover up that mouthpiece hole right in there. We want to keep that open. So that works pretty good right now. Okay, so we've got the mouthpiece on, we've got some support coils around there to help kind of unify it with this piece, um, and then we can 
work on adding the holes. So actually I'm going to add just a little bit more clay back here. It looks just a little awkward and kind of. It's pretty good so uh, the holes you know you might want to play with the placement of the holes a little bit but what I found works just fine is just to put you know one two three one two three holes there and then maybe also one in the back um, traditional ocarinas can have anywhere from three all the way up to twelve holes so you might be able to get more complex with it than this actual demo. Um, but adding the holes is going to change the pitch and it's going to give us the opportunity to actually make music. Um, so I might just start with little tiny holes like this. Just by sticking that skewer in there. start small and then see what you need to do to change the pitch. We can kind of tune the notes a little bit by either widening these holes or making them a little more narrow. So we'll start small and we'll work our way bigger if we need to. So how it'll work is we'll cover these holes up and then I'll see how it sounds. So it is changing pitch but I think we need some bigger holes to really get a more dramatic change and what's nice about it is that we can plug up the holes too if we go a little too big and the tuning process can kind of take a little while getting pretty good might even make this one a little bit bigger So I think some of the notes sound a little bit flat, so we'll see if opening them up makes them sharp. We need to go higher in pitch. You can tell it's getting a little bit closer. See if I can add some more holes over here. So, what I notice is that a fifth hole was not really changing the pitch that much. So I'll probably just plug that hole up back there. Just dip some clay in some water. I'll just cram it in there. Smooth that out. And let's see, let's just keep it to four notes. So that's pretty good. We've got a little scale going. Um, Four notes, you could almost make a song with that. So as far as getting more specific with the tuning, I mean, I think that that would take a lot of time. Um, you might actually be able to get a real tuner out and tune these things perfectly if you needed to. So there you have it.